Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well and having a fantastic week. Today's video is a q and I had a few people asking me when I was going to do my next one, so I thought I would pop a post up on my community tab uh, asking for your questions. So I'm going to do one today. And I actually had quite a lot of questions on diet and nutrition, so I thought I'd separate them into two Q&As. So if you have any extra kind of nutrition questions, diet questions, that kind of thing, please leave them down below and then I'll include them in the following Q&A. So I suppose we better get started on the first question. How do you go about training a bird which has no food motivation? Um, it's a tricky one and there are so many questions I could ask to answer this question. For example, are you using treats? For example, sunflower seeds may already be in the diet. Uh, what time of day are you looking to do these training sessions? Is your bird already full uh, and doesn't want to train because they don't want any more food at that point? Uh, the best way to do it really is to remove their food at bedtime because we don't need to eat overnight and then train them before you give them their breakfast in the morning so they'll be hungry not starving but they'll be hungry and uh, more willing and receptive to training and also try the treat hierarchy test where um, you actually work out what your bird's favorite treat is uh, i did show an example of doing that in i think it's my uh, how to gain your bird's trust video whichever one it is i'll put a card now so you can go and click on that and see how to actually do the test next question is what is the most interesting feature on a bird in your opinion um i agree with the poster who was feathered flock which is their feathers i think feathers are really really interesting and there are so many different types of feathers for different purposes which again is another really interesting feature um i also think that feathers are interesting because they do show uh, and express a bird's physical state. If your bird is unwell or there's been a lot of stress during the development of the feathers, it really does show. And again, I've got a video all about feathers, which I'll leave a link for down below uh, as to how to care for your bird's feathers properly and what they can tell you as well. Um, I also think it's really interesting that birds look totally different under UV light because they actually see the full UV spectrum as well as normal colour vision. So whilst, you know, a cockatiel looks like they do to us, under UV light they look totally different because of the way that their feathers are and how they perceive light. Um, a cockatiel will actually have really really bright cheek patches compared to what we see. Budgies look really awesome. I think David Attenborough actually did a, uh, a part in one of his documentaries. I think it could have been Life, Life with Birds um, and they actually show some birds under UV light. I think it's just really really interesting so um, yeah definitely feathers for me. I thought I'd point out as well, I did get a few repeat questions from my first Q&A that I did um, at the start of the year. So if I didn't answer your question, it may be because I've already answered it. So um, I'll leave again a link to the first Q&A I did if you'd like to go and check that out as well. But the next question is, which bird makes the biggest mess? And I think it's really hard to decide because they're all super messy. Um, probably well no actually I wouldn't I was gonna say chip and fish are probably the best but they're not because when they eat millet they get the husk everywhere um, pickles likes to kick her easy chick substrate all over the floor um, olive likes to splatter fruit all over the white walls so probably those four are the messiest maybe scampi is the the tidiest I think he's not too bad he's um he's pretty good when it comes to those kinds of things so I say scampi is the tidiest and the rest of them are the messiest. The next question is, did you intend on getting some of your birds as rescues? And the answer is yes. Uh, we actually initially wanted to get our cockatiels as rescues and I reached out to the most popular, most abundant uh, parrot rescues in the UK. I sent them messages and I was really shocked with the responses. First of all, some of them didn't even bother to reply to me and you'd think that these rescues would want to actually find suitable homes for these birds. And the other ones were exceptionally rude to me and I'm not a fan of that. So uh, for rescues in the UK, we recommend Safe Haven Parrot Refuge. That's where we got Scampi from and we had a really positive experience with them. And from anecdotal experience, I would also recommend Parrot Trust Scotland. I would not recommend any other parrot rescues. Uh, there could be some really good ones out there, but I've not personally dealt with them. But the biggest ones out there, <laughs> I do not recommend because they were not very um, personable with me, not only not replying but also being really rude. So uh, yes, we definitely intended for rescues. Um, if you haven't seen my previous videos, Olive and Pickles were private rescues and as I said, Scampi was from a rescue centre and I suspect any birds we get in the future will also be rescues. Next up is, could you tell us a little bit more about your work with animals and the volunteer jobs and other jobs you've had to do? I don't know where to begin really. Um, I've worked with animals for 
over 12 years now and I've been very lucky to work with lots of different animals. I have trained sea lions and macaws and parrots in um, displays in wildlife parks and zoos. I have worked with cats in catteries. Uh, I've been head of birds at a farm park and worked with I think it was like 150 birds on my section at that point that I was responsible for. Um, I've been a zoo presenter giving talks about penguins and lorikeets and monkeys and things like that. I've worked with loads of different birds, loads of different exotic animal species um, and it's really really hard work. If you'd like me to make a video on what it's like to work with animals, how to get a job working with animals, I can definitely make that because it's really interesting and very difficult. Uh, you definitely aren't just you know sitting around all day cuddling animals, it is back breaking work in all weathers for very little money, you get no sleep, um, but ultimately it's very rewarding but it's not for everyone so if you're interested in that kind of content that's definitely something I could make. Are you still working on the goals that you talked about in your setting goals video? Um, technically um, I set five goals in that video again if you want to go and watch it, it's on my channel. Um, I've achieved three of the goals which I'm really surprised about because I didn't think I'd achieve any. Two are probably really unrealistic, if you go and watch your video you'll understand <laughs> what I've achieved and what I haven't but um, I'm working on it, I may make a follow up video but I just kind of made that video kind of for myself just to give myself a bit more motivation so it's really cool that I've achieved um, three out of five of those goals. <sighs> Hi Jimmy. Uh, okay, next one is, out of all the birds you've worked with in the past, uh, which was your favourite? I think that's a really hard question to answer because I've worked with a lot of birds, hundreds of birds even. Uh, some of my favourites though, lorikeets. I worked with a flock of nearly 80 lorikeets and they're just so full of personality, I think they're awesome. Uh, if you've watched my previous videos, you'll know that I absolutely love ducks and chickens, um, penguins. I worked with a flock of Humboldt penguins, um, again they're full of personality. Everyone thinks penguins are really cute but they can be quite vicious as well and they have quite a strong bite. Um, southern ground hornbills, I absolutely love hornbills, I think again they're so full of personality. Toucans, I don't know, I, <laughs> I love all the birds I've worked with, I think they're amazing and I don't think there's a bird species that I've been kind of indifferent to, I always find every single bird species is really individual and interesting. David's here, woo! Wow. Because the uh, questions involve him. So the next question is, how did we meet? Um, I, <laughs> I suppose I should give some backstory. So I had a few relationships before Sophie and they were all met through friends and offline and stuff. And I was like, this isn't working for me. So I just thought I'd give online dating a try. And I had some bad success with that, a lot of odd people. And then I randomly messaged Sophie because I thought her profile was funny, she said, no axe murderers, so I said, I'm not an axe murderer. And then we got talking, we met up, and then that's how it started. It was quite, um, I don't know, sort of whirlwind almost, really, wasn't Romantic. it? Romantic. Yeah, and you wouldn't, I mean, I'm not going to disparage online dating because, you know, it worked for us, so give it a go, but you have to be so careful with it, and I was just so surprised at how it worked out. And only do it if you're an adult. Please don't meet anyone off the internet yeah, if, if you're, you're not an adult, because don't. Yeah. <laughs> there are a lot of weirdos out there. I mean, we're the, the good kind of weirdos. <laughs> Having him not as an axe murderer was quite high up there on my criteria, so that was... It worked out well. It worked right, out, it? it worked out well. <laughs> the next question is, what did David do as a job before YouTube and Best Behaved Birds? Um, so before this, I used to work at university as an academic admissions tutor. So basically that means I was the person who decided if people got to go to university or not in special cases. I'd help people with advice, do open days, promote the university, do some marketing work, you know, just generally uh, do this sort of thing. I was also doing a PhD. Uh, sadly, a lot of things happened, so I couldn't continue that, which made me very sad. I used to be a writer as well. I still do write, so I've got some books. Book is on my <laughs> Amazon oh, yeah. store. Links down there. Go and buy the book or get it on Kindle. <laughs> but yeah, basically, um, to put it very concisely, I used to be a teacher. Yeah, me too. I did a bit of teaching for a bit. I taught animal care for a while. But we have since discovered that working in academia is awful. So yeah, it's not the best place to work. It's very draining. Very draining, very tiring. A lot expected of you. It's quite uncertain. I'm not going to go into too much detail because it's whinging. But yeah, um, carefully consider if you want to do that sort of career because it's a lot of effort and there's not always the best payout. So now we do YouTube and Best Behaved Birds as like our kind of full-time... Mm -hmm. work stuff so yeah 
Have our birds ever chewed cork wood? Yes, they have. They absolutely love chewing cork. It's a little bit pricier as a material. Um, but we have, um, I'll put a picture on screen now if you haven't seen it already. We have these remote control toys that have little cork buttons in them. I think they're really cool. And all of the birds really like chewing out the cork material because it's a nice soft wood. So yes, they love cork material and I would like to get some more toys, but they're not really that accessible in the UK for sort of cork wood toys. The next question is, what's the first trick you should teach your bird? Um, it's kind of a toss up between step up and target training. Uh, you should kind of teach them both in tandem because they are two essential skills for your birds and they're things that they should really know before they come out of the cage so that you can get them back into the cage safely. Next question is, have you ever worked with budgies before? Yes, I have. When I was head of birds at the farm park, I worked with a nice big flock of budgies and I think budgies are absolutely amazing. I would absolutely love to rescue a huge flock of budgies and name them all after Lord of the Rings characters. Um, but yeah, I think budgies are absolutely amazing and uh, I really enjoyed working with them. And then the next question is the ones we get all the time, of course. Are we going to get more birds? Are we going to get other pets in the future? Uh, right now, no, we are not getting more birds right now. Not until we can move to a much bigger place. Although we said that after we got Scampi and then we got Olive, so who knows. The plan is not to get any more birds right now until we can move house. Um, and will we get any other kind of species of pets in the future? Absolutely. I would love to rescue lots of animals and I would love to have my own little farm or our farm should I say with David obviously um I would love to have our farm and be able to rescue as many animals as possible and give them the best life but who knows we may not get there I'm hoping that we could get there at some point and we would love to have all different kinds of animals so make sure you stay tuned the next question from my buddy ornithology dude is what was the most challenging part of working with the vultures and condors um if you haven't seen the vultures and condors I've worked with, I'll put some pictures here. I worked with king vultures and Andean condors. They're absolutely incredible animals and I was really privileged to be able to work with them. Uh, I think the most challenging parts, firstly Andean condors are very dangerous to work with. So it's always a little bit scary working around them because they're so huge as well. Uh, but they are, they have the potential to injure you so that's always quite scary. Uh, probably, I mean, they're fairly easy to work with generally, but I think the most challenging part was cleaning up their food in the summer because, of course, they eat meat, and when that's been sat out all day, it stinks and it's gross. So that was never a pleasant experience, cleaning that up after a hot summer's day. How did you come to the conclusion of getting birds as pets over something like uh, a cat or a dog? Do I want other pets? Obviously, we said we would like to have other species in the future. Um, birds have always just been part of our lives. David's had birds all of his life. I've obviously loved birds all of mine and it just felt right. Like I wouldn't necessarily choose another pet over birds if it was one or the other, I'd always go for birds. Um, I think, especially for dogs in where we live at the moment, it wouldn't be um, suitable to have a dog. It didn't suit our lifestyle when we were looking for uh, pets at that point. And I feel like dogs are like really clingy and I feel with our birds being really independent i don't really like really clingy pets um i really like cats but again in uh where we live at the moment it just wouldn't be suitable so birds just seem like the right choice so yeah uh, you've worked a lot with animals at the zoo um was it from working with the birds at the zoo that sparked your enjoyment for parrots at home i guess so it's a, a multitude of things um but definitely actually having the experience of working with the birds firsthand made me realise that, you know, I could handle a bird at home. Um, I think sometimes it's very easy to see all these birds online, even, you know, my own birds and see how cute they are and that kind of thing. But you don't always see how difficult they are and how noisy they are and just how much poo they produce. And, you know, all the enrichment you have to create for them and the diet preparation, it just doesn't... You know prepare you for that so actually having to do that day in day out does prepare you for having a bird at home uh, what's your favorite tv show uh, game of thrones black sails and spartacus are my three favorite tv shows favorite movie lord of the rings trilogy of course but i have a really big soft spot for indiana jones and the last crusade and the mummy the 1999 version i think it was with brenna fraser amazing film you must watch it Favourite music, I like a bit of everything. I like old school folk music, I like dance music, pop music. Not really that fussy to be honest, um, as long as it hasn't got ridiculous lyrics like some of the modern music does. Um, I'm kind of cool with it. Um, do you have any other hobbies? 
Uh, I used to do a lot of entering competitions, run a lot of prizes, but it's really difficult at the moment with lockdown and everyone's at home and looking for things to do and everyone has discovered the hobby of entering competitions so I don't do it anymore because like a thousand people will enter to win a bottle of shower gel so it's just not worth my time anymore so I'm pretty tied up with you know dealing with the birds, working, uh, making YouTube videos so I don't really have a huge amount of time for anything else. Next question, do olive pickles and scampi all get along? Uh, it doesn't seem like you work with two or three at once, is there a reason for that? Um, they don't all get along cohesively at the moment, but again, it's a long process, it's not something that just happens immediately. Um, however, yesterday Scampi went over to Pickles and they did like a little Spider-Man kiss, he was upside down and she was there and they were like being really cute and non-aggressive, which was a huge breakthrough, we were kind of gobsmacked really. Uh, Pickles and Olive can be out at the same time and They've been on the stand together, um, sometimes with a bit of a barrier in the middle, but they can sort of be in the same space, but they don't like being like right in each other's faces, they will get a bit funny. So again, it's a long process, we're still working on it. It's not, you know, as easy as it seems, and that's fine, and we knew that when we took on these birds, but they do come out together. Uh, Scampi is a bit more of a pain because he just likes to harass everyone, um, but it is, it is moving in the right direction, so we're really happy about that. Do we have any plans to breed our birds or breed birds in general? No. <laughs> um, in fact, with Scampi, with the clause that we signed with the rescue centre, we're not actually permitted to breed him. Obviously, we can't necessarily stop nature happening, but we are technically not allowed to breed him. And I wouldn't want to, to be honest, as I've said a lot of times. I'm not against having birds from breeders, but there are just so many parrots looking for homes that you know, if we were going to bring any more birds into our flock we would always opt for rescuing first um, and I am not that experienced with feeding baby birds I have done a little bit before but I'm not experienced in feeding baby birds despite the amount of comments I get about how do I feed baby birds um, so I would not want to do that I don't want to get up at you know two in the morning to go and feed a baby bird and it's just unnecessary we don't need any baby birds here so that's not something that we want to do that brings me to the end of the q and A. I I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about me and David and the birds and that kind of thing. As I said, if you have any nutrition questions for the next one, please leave them down below. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a great day. Take care and see you later.